Okay, welcome everybody to our virtual Surviving and Thriving Women's Cancer Lecture Series, Part 2, Nutrition for Optimal Immunity. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm Dr. Darlene Gibbon, Medical Director of Gynecologic Oncology at Summis Medical Group Cancer, uh, Cancer Center. While we would have loved to have seen you all in person for our annual event, in lieu of that, we decided to take the talks uh, we had planned for the evening and bring them to you virtually. Now I'd like to present to you or introduce our presenter, Jeannie Petrugi, registered dietitian, nutritionist, culinary coach, and founder of Living Plate. This presentation was prepared by Jeannie in her personal capacity, and the views and opinions expressed in this presentation are Jeannie's own and do not necessarily reflect the views of Summit Medical Group. Located in Far Hills, New Jersey, Living Plate combines personalized dietetic counseling with hands-on cooking instruction. This evening, Jeannie will demonstrate for you three delicious recipes, all of which are designed to give you nutrition for optimal immunity. Now we'll be turning our Zoom over to Jeannie. Please allow us a moment to transition to a better screen for watching the cooking demo. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to my kitchen. I am standing in the Living Plate Teaching Kitchen in Far Hills, New Jersey, where we used to have um, patients coming in for counseling and we used to do um, hands-on cooking uh, classes, uh, but we have transitioned to providing virtual classes. So you can, aside from tonight, find me on Facebook at Living Plate and also on Instagram at Living Plate uh, for more cooking demos. So tonight, I am super excited uh, to be having a conversation around nutrition for optimal immunity. Uh, there is no one food that is really a game changer here. It really is about overall dietary intake. So we're going to be talking about a variety of foods tonight and how they can contribute to supporting your immune system, which is particularly important at this time. Uh, so we will be preparing three recipes, as Dr. Gibbon mentioned. I am going to prepare for you one cooked recipe, which is a uh, sauteed salmon with spinach and lentils. We're going to do a no cook recipe, which is going to be an overnight oats recipe with orange and cardamom, one of my favorites. And we are also going to be making a harvest quinoa salad, which is considered an assembly recipe. We're actually going to start with that one first uh, because it does require that we roast the vegetables. Uh, the reason why I wanted to demonstrate this recipe is because it is an assembly recipe, which means that the cauliflower and the butternut squash that we are going to be roasting this evening because we have the time, those should be items that are cooked and already in your refrigerator, along with quinoa, which can be batch cooked um, or purchased frozen for that matter, uh, so that this salad actually can be assembled very quickly with just a little bit of prep. So you guys ready to go? All right, so we're gonna start with the first recipe. I am going to change my view so that you will be able to see my workspace. So there we go. So that works out really well for you. Uh, the recipe that you are going to be receiving will look like this. And I am going to be reading the ingredients. Um, let me just get them on the table first here. Anybody know what that is? All right. So we have some convenience items here, which are important. Okay, I think you guys can all see that now. Great, and here is a whole butternut squash, which I am going to show you how to chop, but this is um, a convenience item that you can purchase at the store. So this recipe calls for uh, two pounds of butternut squash, peeled and seeded and cubed, four cups of cauliflower florets. So I'm going to show you how to prepare the cauliflower. This, um, I like to share with you some essential kitchen tools um, as I work through my demo. This is one of them. This is a produce bag. What we're going to do when we come home from the grocery store is get that cauliflower out of plastic. We're going to chop it into florets and then put it into this uh, uh, produce bag so that it stays nice and fresh and you're one step closer to getting this meal on the table. Um, we have two leeks that have been rinsed and we are going to chop them. So here are the two leeks that I've rinsed already. And here is our leek, our whole leek. Uh, we have one cup of quinoa. We're using this beautiful multicolor quinoa. It's a tricolor quinoa. 
uh, instead of white, but you could use plain white quinoa as well. We, we are going to be using one tablespoon of olive oil to roast our vegetables. Uh, we have, look at this, handy, I love these. It's pomegranate seeds that are already out of the um, fruit. So already done for us, nice and neat. And then we're going to finish this out with a quarter cup of pepitas, which are raw pumpkin seeds. So while I, let's switch the view back to hello. Hello. Um, so as I kind of get these things out and ready, we are going to be preparing the cauliflower together. So cauliflower is a cruciferous vegetable and it contain, contains compounds um, that are powerful antioxidants and support immunity. So the immune system has uh, two responses. There's an innate response and an adaptive response. The innate response is your immune system's initial response to an invader or a toxin um, or a virus or bacteria. Um, and it would be something like, um, if you got a cold, you got a runny nose, right? Like that's an innate immune response. An adaptive immune response, and the reason I'm defining this is because I am gonna be talking about immunity, so I wanted you to understand, just kind of have a reference point. Adaptive immunity is uh, when your body remembers that invader and can respond that way. The adaptive response is actually a longer term and sometimes more productive response. Um, an adaptive response would be something like um, you get the chicken pox and then your body remembers that you've had the chicken pox and so you have that protection. Of course, now we have a vaccine for that. So, um, so just important to note that there, there are different types of immune responses and these foods will, will um, really um, benefit your immune system for both the innate and the adaptive immune response. So we have and Dr. Gibbon and um, Midge and um, <laughs> Mitch and Carol, if you have anything to add, always feel free. Um, so this is the cauliflower, which is a cruciferous vegetable like its cousin broccoli. Um, we are going to chop that. Uh, so let's go ahead and change the view. We'll go back to watching me work here. So let's move these things aside. The first thing we need to do is get the, just trim it and just pull off the leaves with your hands. And this is another piece of essential kitchen equipment. This is a chef's knife. What you want to do is you want to grab the handle and leave your uh, pointer finger free and your thumb free and then pinch the base of the blade. Do not want to chop like this. I see this happen a lot. You'll get tendonitis and you don't have total control of the knife. When you pinch the base of the blade, it might feel awkward at first, uh, but you then have much more control over your knife. So let's trim this. And this is going to be easy because we're just going to open this up. Let me just get this plastic out of the way. Okay, so let's get our florets. I've already rinsed this. Let's uh, remove the florets. You want the florets to be about the same size as your butternut squash. So let's go ahead, just chop around. If some of them are smaller, it's okay. They'll just be a little bit more well done. I'm just gonna work my way around the cauliflower. Great. And just break it apart into florets. If you need to use your knife, you can do that. So when I get home from the grocery store, and this is one of the tips I share with all of my patients, um, the cauliflower comes out of the plastic, it gets rinsed and it gets chopped into florets, and this will stay in my refrigerator for a really long time, uh, you know, at least four days. Uh, so being that we're not making so many trips to the grocery store, uh, this is a good thing to do. Just bulk buy it and then chop it and you're ready to go. So I'm going to add this, here it is, to my, Stainless steel bowl, another piece of essential kitchen equipment. We are going to use this to toss our cauliflower with some olive oil and our butternut squash. You can roast them together or separate. If you're batch cooking and making more, you can do them separate. I'm going to add my olive oil. You never need more than two tablespoons of olive oil for a sheet pan. So anywhere between one and two tablespoons is more than enough. You don't want to just hold that olive oil over, you know, like, let me see, where do I have my olive oil? Oh, it's missing. So you just don't want to pour it over. You really want to measure it. Okay, make sure they're well coated. I am going to season it with a little bit of salt. It's optional if you're on a lower sodium diet, you do not need to add the salt, but it can, it can help enhance the flavor. Toss these up. All right, now I'm going to add those to my sheet pan. Another, if you guys are taking notes, another piece of essential kitchen equipment. 
parchment paper, unless you love doing dishes. I do not. So I'm going to be using the parchment paper. So the parchment paper makes it super simple to roast just about anything. Let's get our vegetables on the pan. And then just spread them out with your spoon. And we are going to pop these into our oven. Our oven has been preheated. This one's a little big. To uh, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Great, so it is going, let's adjust this a little bit so that you can see. We're going to put it right into the oven. In the middle of the oven is best. And we are going to let that roast for about 20 minutes. So take your kitchen timer. You don't want it, we're gonna be doing a lot tonight. So I don't want you to have to babysit me and say, hey Jeannie, the, the vegetables are burning. So we'll put that on 20 minutes so that we don't forget. So um, I did pre-purchase the butternut squash because I wanted you to see that convenience item, but I do wanna show you how easy it is to prepare butternut squash. It is intimidating uh, because it's a thicker skin and sometimes they get really big. Um, you know, one tip I have for you, and I, again, I'm gonna show you how to do this, but you could always ask the grocer to chop it for you. If you want really fresh butternut squash or if they're sold out, um, you can ask them to trim it and at least get it cut in half for you. They have some really sharp knives in the back there. Most of the time, they're really happy to do that for you. So just keep, it, keep that in mind. You have another option as well. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is trim. You want a sharp knife, that's the first thing you want. Sharp knife is actually much, much less dangerous than a dull knife. Look at the flesh on this, wow. So for those of you, if any of you have watched my cooking demos before, you will know what nutrients this is rich in because we talk about it a lot, especially now. So vitamin A is another powerful antioxidant. Wow, look at that. The butternut squash is loaded with vitamin A. And vitamin A um, is uh, really beneficial for your immune system because it does act as a powerful antioxidant, helping control inflammation and managing those free radicals. So definitely wanna keep uh, plenty of orange vegetables in your diet. Um, to remove the seeds, this is a handy piece of kitchen equipment, not essential, you could do it with just a spoon, but it, any of you know what this is? This is a grapefruit spoon. And because it has the kind of the little teeth on it, the ridged edge, it makes getting kind of the, the seeds and that stringy part out really simple. So I'm just going to scrape out the seeds here. So another wonderful thing, let's just go back to vitamin A for a second. Another wonderful thing about vitamin A from uh, both a nutrition and a culinary point of view is that it's very, uh, stable, even uh, when it's introduced to heat. So we're going to cook this butternut squash for you know, a decent amount of time. It's still going to be orange. If you put the butternut squash or a carrot, another vitamin A rich food in your soup and you cook your soup for three hours, that carrot or that butternut squash is still going to be orange. That is an indication that that phytochemical beta carotene is still hanging out and active. Let's clear. So do you see how easy that was? I'm just going to wipe away our seeds here. It's really nice to keep your workspace clean. All right. Um, now, butternut squash has a, um, it has a somewhat thick skin. So unlike delicata squash, which can be, you can eat the skin, the, the butternut squash isn't so pleasant. So you just take your knife, uh, a peeler is a hassle. I prefer to use my knife just very carefully. I have this on a flat surface. So it's pretty easy to do, especially this part because it's, does, it's not hollow on the inside. All right. And then we're just going to chop those. So just make, it's pretty skinny. So you see how I'm taking my knife and I'm holding it down? So it'd be kind of hard to get through this flesh if I'm just pushing. So I'm just going to tip my um, knife down and then just rock it backwards. So simple. And then we're just going to chop it. All right, I'm not going to do the whole thing for you because we already have enough butternut squash. I'm going to use this for soup tomorrow. So see how simple that was? So now you can feel free um, to chop your own butternut squash. 
this off and not be frightened by it. All right. I am going to go ahead while we're still in this view and prep our leaks. Actually, let's just come to hello for a second. Um, so the reason why I chose leeks for this recipe, you could use scallions, you could use red onion, yellow onion, sweet onion, um, really any allium vegetable is going to work really well here. So allium vegetables also have compounds that are uh, powerful anti-inflammatory compounds. So they're all good, including garlic as well. Um, but the reason why I chose leeks is because it's a wonderful uh, source of prebiotics. Prebiotics um, feed probiotics. So probiotics are your gut bugs that really help maintain a healthy gut microbiome, a really great environment there. And you need to take care of them. You need to feed them well. And those gut bugs really thrive um, on, pro, on prebiotics. Uh, so you can uh, take in probiotics as well in, in the form of yogurt that we're going to be having today. But the prebiotics um, are found in foods like leeks in particular. Um, also Jerusalem artichokes, um, bananas that aren't totally ripened are also rich in prebiotics. So having leeks every once in a while instead of a standard onion is really a great gift to your gut microbiome. All right, so let's come down and take a look at our leeks. So leeks are grown in very, very sandy soil. So it's important that you rinse them. So you, this, you can't eat the green part. So you're just going to trim off the white and then cut it in half. So this was the whole one, just like this. I cut it in half and then run water through the top. Like literally just hold it under your um, running water in your sink and make sure all of that uh, sand comes out. And then you're just going to chop them. So I think what I'll do here, these are good size. I'm just going to chop them one time in the middle and then grow in my fingers to protect them. I'm really paying attention to what I'm doing here. We don't need an incident. I'm not at the hospital. <laughs> Protect our fingers here. Heaney, are the leeks something that you can wash ahead of time? Like if, let's say that you go grocery shopping in the weekend, but you're gonna use it like Tuesday night. Is that something that you can do ahead or do you think you should wait until? That's a really okay. great question. And the answer is yes, about a day before, or you could chop them and put them in a bag and freeze them. Uh, if you freeze them, you would just, they might, you know, they might be better cooked. These are going in raw. They might be better cooked in a soup um, if you freeze them because they will lose some of their um, crispness. But yes, you can prepare them ahead of time. They have a little bit less water than onions. Um, so just prep them a day, maybe even two. You might even get a second day out of it. Great question, Elise. All right, so let's just cut this last one here. And then we'll have the leeks for, I just want you to see how I'm rocking my knife here. I'm, I'm not rocking, I'm actually just pushing it. So with really thin vegetables like this, you can just push your knife through. So now we have a really nice amount of onion, of our, our allium vegetable, which is our leeks. I'm just going to put that in here for later. And I will show you, just wipe this down again. Uh, okay, here we go. Perfect. And then let me go ahead and show you the quinoa. I decided to prep it ahead of time because you don't really need to watch quinoa boil. <laughs> so the quinoa has been prepared. It was one cup of quinoa to two cups of broth. I really like using broth when I make my quinoa. It just gives it another layer of flavor, but you can use water. Um, I use vegetable broth. You could use chicken broth if you'd like, um, but you also water is totally fine. That's great. So just made that in a, a sauce pot, bring it to a boil, reduce it to simmer, uh, simmer it for like seven minutes, I think, eight, seven to eight minutes, and then put the lid on and just set it and forget it. You could also make it in a rice cooker, which is really handy. That's truly set it and forget it. Um, okay, great. So while we wait, we'll assemble this recipe after we make the salmon, which we're going to make now. So as you guys, if you have questions, you can just go ahead and start dropping them into the chat. If I can answer them before we're over, like at it kind of dead time now while I'm switching um, views, I will try and answer them. Jeannie, so can I ask this. you a question about the quinoa? Sure. Um, is it important to rinse it before you cook it very well? I mean, I think that's something that I heard 
that's a really great question, Carol, and I'm glad that you asked it because I, I, I should have mentioned it. So, um, so quinoa has a powerful antioxidant that coats its surface to protect all antioxidants, phytochemicals, actually, all phytochemicals protect the plant from like insects and invaders and things like that. Um, the coating on the outside of the quinoa is called saponin, and that does protect the plant. So it, so it's kind of like, um, if you don't have to rinse your quinoa, I recommend you don't because I want you to get this, I want you to, to get those um, powerful antioxidants. They actually have been studied in research as a cancer protective compound. So I would, I would prefer that you not rinse a quinoa. However, if that bitter taste, so saponins kind of taste a little soapy. And if you rinse your quinoa, you'll actually see that the water is a little soapy. That's the saponins coming off. Um, if the bitterness is going to prevent you from consuming the quinoa, then go ahead and rinse it. You can also, Carol, purchase um, pre-rinsed quinoa that's been dried. So it's a little bit less bitter. Just look on the package. It will say pre-rinsed. So you actually have quite a bit, um, quite a bit of options. So we have a question. Thank you. Is, is quinoa better than brown rice? Um, it, there's, there's no better here. Um, it's, it, they're not equivalent though. So quinoa and brown rice are both excellent sources of fiber. Quinoa does have one thing over brown rice in that it is a complete protein. Uh, so, because it's actually a seed, we eat it as a grain, but if you look at it, you can even see, it's like a bunch of little seeds. Um, it is a complete protein. So if you're looking to have added an added source of protein, then having quinoa occasionally is great. Um, it also is a little bit lower glycemic, meaning that it doesn't impact blood sugars um, as much as a brown rice and certainly as much as a white rice would. But I wouldn't say don't eat brown rice because I think brown rice is great, but I would say introduce uh, both to your diet. It'd be great. All right, so let's move on to the salmon. Moving along very nicely here, Elise. The salmon, you're gonna, you guys are gonna love this recipe because it's just ridiculously simple and super delicious. So let's go ahead and switch our view. Okay. Uh, is quinoa, does quinoa cost more than brown rice? Um, not necessarily. If you buy like a white label brand, um, no. It can be very equivalently priced. This quinoa is kind of mainstream now. I love that about it. All right, so here comes the salmon. That's a lot of salmon. <laughs> more, more than the recipe called by. I asked him for four six ounce fillets. I think these are more like seven ounces. Pretty hearty. Okay. All right, another convenience item. We have some boxed baby spinach. All right, so our recipe calls for one and a half pounds of salmon cut into fillets. Again, these are a little large, but you can ask your fishmonger to cut them into appropriate sizes. Um, one tablespoon of olive oil, two lemons, we're going to zest one. Two cups of spinach, I'm probably going to use more because I'll be able to. And then one and a half cups of lentils. Uh, lentils, you can cook on your own from scratch if you want, or another convenience item, you can purchase canned lentils. Uh, I introduce this a lot in my cooking demos that I do live and people are surprised to learn that you can purchase canned lentils. So if you find them, go ahead and grab them, get them in your pantry. Lentils are one of those legumes that's really easy uh, to digest for most people. It's also super rich in fiber. Uh, so uh, rich in soluble and insoluble fiber. So the, these two types of fibers um, really work together to escort toxins and nasty things out of your body um, through the gastrointestinal tract and your gut bugs love them. They love this kind of, um, especially the soluble fiber. They like the insoluble fiber is really like the broom that kind of sweeps everything along. Um, so it helps with regularity too. So I love lentils. I use them a lot for a um, lot of different recipes. All right, so let's, I'm going to switch the view and bring in the saute pan. I'm gonna move my spinach aside just for a minute. Okay. Oh, somebody's saying they love salmon. Me too. I, I just love salmon. All right. So the first thing I want to do actually is um, great, not great, um, uh, zest my lemon. What am I thinking of, Jeannie? Come on. All right. Let's get our grater. So we have, I have two tonight. Um, actually, I'll introduce you to this one. This is a really cool tool. 
it's a microplane, but it has so many sides. It has like a mandolin on one side for slicing. I'm going to be using this microplane on one side for zesting. Um, here's a shredding blade and then a larger shredding blade. So let's go to the zesting side. It makes really quick business of the zest here. Look at that, nice and fluffy. So adding zest to any recipe is going to allow you to get a wonderful lemony flavor without extra sourness. So we are going to add some juice to our salmon, but not a ton. And this zest will uh, really just amp up the flavor a little bit. Additionally, the zest of the citrus fruits, uh, we're gonna be zesting two of them today, um, are full of flavonoids, which are powerful antioxidants. <laughs> antioxidants are going to be a common theme tonight. Okay. And Jeannie, do you wash your lemons before you zest them or? Um... Yes, really important. So yes, absolutely. Um, wash your lemons. I use like a, a nice vegetable wash um, to make sure that they're nice and clean if you're going to be consuming. We're cooking this. so. Um, it's, it's not a huge concern of mine, um, but yes, you want to wa you want to wash all of your produce actually, even produce where you're not using lime, because when you cut the, the rind, when you take that knife and you run through it, anything that's on the outside is going to go to the inside. So I recommend you wash everything, even if you're not eating the rind. Okay. So we are going to, um, juice our lemon. Let's, why don't we read the recipe together? Probably a good idea. <laughs> okay. So we're going to zest and juice our lemon, cut it into wedges for serving for later. Um, we're going to whisk the olive oil, lemon juice, and the zest, and we're going to cover our salmon with it. Um, and then we are going to start cooking the salmon in a skillet. All right. So let's go ahead and switch the view again. Perfect. Let me just. Did yes. you, the lentils, when you took them out of the can, do we, do you rinse those or do you oh. just drain them? Yes, in the recipe, we do rinse them. Yes, okay. you want to make sure that they're, they're very well rinsed, actually. Okay. Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and juice our lemon. So I'm going to cut my lemon. So if the rest of, any recipe calls for zesting and juicing lemon, make sure you zest it first, because um, zesting a juiced lemon is very difficult to do. I've made that mistake before. So you will learn from my mistake. Another piece of kitchen equipment that I just adore is my citrus reamer. So when you put your citrus into your reamer, you want to make sure that the cut side is down. A lot of people do think that you do this, but you don't get the most out of your fruit. Um, this way, it turns it inside out. And look at that. Wow. Just getting tons of fruit out of that, tons of fruit juice out of that. Okay. Put this here. Makes it really easy. Okay. And then we are going to add our, let me just get this here, add our zest. Look at how fluffy and beautiful that is. And some of our olive oil. I am going to season this with just a little bit of salt and some pepper. Totally optional, but I like it. So I'm going to add it. All right. And then we are going to add this to our salmon. We're just going to brush it. You don't even have to whisk it. You don't want to dirty that if I don't have to. There we go. Just going to brush the salmon. You, you don't need to marinate your salmon too long. If you wanted to do this, you know, up to like an hour before um, putting it in the skillet, if you had time, that'd be great, but not totally necessary. All right. I think that's plenty. It's going to be nice and lemony. All right, let's bring in our saute pan. Okay, I think you guys can see that, yes? Perfect, how's that view? Is that good, Elise? Looks great. Okay, I'm going to add the rest of my oil. And I'm going to start at, you can actually see that the lemon juice has started to cook the salmon, almost like a ceviche. It started to denature the protein already. It's, these are big pieces of salmon. I don't even know if these are all gonna fit in here. Let's see. You wanna put them in skin side down. So make sure that you, you buy salmon 
that has the skin on because the it'll fall apart if you don't. I actually think I'm only gonna be able to fit three of these big guys in here. So that's okay, we'll save this one for later. All right. I'm going to turn this up and we're going to put the lid on. I'm going to set it aside. We will come back to it. I will watch it, don't worry. So Jeannie, and the lentils, yeah, somebody have a question? Yes, yeah, so uh, one of the listeners actually has a question. They wanted to know if they were to cook the lentils or um, from a bag, how long would they have to soak the lentils for before? Oh, they that's such a great question. And another reason why I love lentils, you don't have to pre-soak them. So it's not like a white bean or a kidney bean or a black bean. Um, lentils, when they are dried, you can cook them. You just put them in water, you bring it to a boil and you let them simmer for about uh, 20, to 30, 20 to 30 minutes and you're good. So, and the lentils from the can, um, you know, the texture is definitely going to be different. It's more like a canned bean, it's softer. The lentils, if you cook them from scratch, uh, they'll be a little bit more al dente and great. So I encourage you to try both, but always, you know, having the canned lentils in the uh, pantry is just a really nice convenience item. All right, so I can hear my salmon sizzling. I am just going to slice my lemon so that I can get it out of the way because that's what we're going to be using for garnish. I'm just going to slice it in half and then really just make nice little rings so that if somebody wanted some extra tang to their salmon, they can have that. All right, let's just set this aside. I'm actually gonna put this, I'll just put this over here. All right, so why don't we go ahead and move on to our overnight oats and chia pudding. So the salmon, it goes without saying, actually I should say it, right? <laughs> uh, super high in omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, so omega-3 fatty acids, um, an essential fatty acid, your body does not make it, so you need to eat it. Uh, and salmon is one of the best sources of omega-3 fatty acids um, and powerful anti-inflammatory compounds. Uh, so having, you know, two servings of salmon, you know, two six ounce servings of salmon per week uh, would be recommended. Uh, all other fatty fish, which are good um, resources are things like canned sardines, canned mackerel, um, you know, canned fatty fish and other fatty fish as well uh, will give you good, good amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. Um, chia uh, seeds also have omega-3 fatty acids, but it's a form known as ALA, and that has to be converted into the active form of omega-3, and that conversion doesn't happen very efficiently. It does happen, but it doesn't happen so efficiently. So while chia seeds um, and things like walnuts also have omega-3 fatty acids, um, I recommend that you eat them, um, but not as like the sole source of omega-3. I really think the addition of the salmon is, is really uh, nice to your diet. All right, so let's take a look because my vegetables are ready here. Your vegetables are ready here. So let's take a look at how they're doing. Ooh, they look good. All right, let's take them out and we'll test them together. So you just want them slightly browned. I see my cauliflower is slightly browned here which is good. Just insert a knife, make sure that the butternut squash, oh, see that's perfect. So it's super, it's al dente. The butternut squash is al dente. My cauliflower, same thing. Now these are going to continue to cook even a little bit longer as they sit. So I'm done. I set that timer for 20 minutes and we're good. So let's go ahead and put this behind me. My um, oven is a convection oven. So it's pretty efficient at cooking. You might need a little bit longer, but as soon as your knife inserts into the butternut squash easily, you're done. You can just take that off and you're good to go. All right, let me just check my salmon here. Oh yeah. All right, so I actually want you to see this because I am gonna flip it before we do our overnight pudding. There we go. Teeny, while you're flipping the salmon. Oh, wait, I can't hear you because there's a sizzle. So hold on one second. Okay. Let me just flip this and I'll put the lid back on. So you can see how nice and brown that is. Turn this down a little bit. 
and get this back to the side before we move forward. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay, so actually, this is a question for you and Mitch. So we did have a question from one of our attendees about that, that she had been warned about mercury and fish. And she wants to know what our thoughts are on, you know, eating too much. Um, you know, is what, what's kind of guidelines are there for that? I will also contribute. If you go to seafoodwatch.org, that is the evidence-based resource for understanding um, which fish and how much of the fish um, is safe to consume. Uh, so uh, that, that's where I direct people to go, seafoodwatch.org. Mitch, are you, are you aware of that resource? Yeah, okay. All right, good. All right, are we ready to move forward? Okay, great. So I'm going to change the view. Now we're going to ma be making one of my favorite uh, chia puddings. It's a chia overnight pudding with some oats and some yogurt. Um, I love it because it's a little exotic with the flavors and um, just something a little bit different I wanted to share with you. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ingredients. I'm actually gonna turn the salmon down a little bit. Let that cook. So this is the uh, orange ginger overnight oats. We have half a cup of Greek yogurt. So this container, which is, um, how many ounces is this? 5.3 ounces, a little bit more than a cup, but it's fine. Like you can use just one of these, it's fine. Um, I like using Greek yogurt because it's thicker and it's a little bit, um, you know, clingier. So it's good for a pudding. One cup of oats. Um, you can purchase gluten-free oats if needed. Um, oats are naturally gluten-free, but if you have celiac disease, you'll want to take a look for um, gluten-free. We have one cup of almond milk. So here's a lesson about almond milk. Let's just come to our hello view for a second because I'd like to look at you when I'm giving a lesson. Um, so this is um, or organic, it's called organic unsweetened original almond milk. There were like four different kinds of almond milk there. And one was just like original almond milk, but it didn't say unsweetened. So when I read the, the nutrition facts label, sure enough, it had added sugar. So I did find the unsweetened, but that was after going through. There was vanilla, of course it was chocolate, um, which they're fine, but you just, that's not what we're going. We're actually adding sugar in the form of maple syrup. So you really want to look for unsweetened. Um, so just because it says plain does not mean it's unsweetened. So make sure that you read the labels for the added sugars. Um, so this has none. All right, so where do we wanna start? I think the one, there are two um, actually skills I wanna share with you today. And that is uh, how to peel and zest ginger. Let's move these over here. This is the ridiculously simple recipe as well as the salmon. <laughs> two really nice, easy recipes, I love it. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and uh, hand, we'll handle our ginger first, and then I'm going to show you how to supreme an orange. Uh, so let's just take a look at the recipe. We want to zest our orange first for about a tablespoon of zest, and then we're going to grate the ginger. Perfect. So I'm going to use something a little bit different. Uh, this is a, also a microplane, so it's the same as this one, but it's just the singular tool. And I washed this orange ahead of time. This is a cara cara orange, um, which are, uh, you can get at the grocery store now. I'm super excited about slicing it open. It's gonna be really pretty. It has like a corally flesh. So uh, oranges are packed with vitamin C, another powerful antioxidant that can support your immune system. So consuming whole citrus fruits versus citrus juice, uh, is something that I advise. Um, because when you consume the whole orange, you're getting the benefits of the fiber as well. If you're consuming the juice, you're not getting as much fiber and you're getting a whole lot of sugar in one glassful. So uh, it's really nice to include whole citrus fruits. And remember what I said about the zest. It has uh, lots of polyphenols, more antioxidants to support your immune system. All right, just rotate, just keep rotating it around until you get it off. There we go. That looks like we're at about a tablespoon. So let's just push that aside a little bit and then we will tackle our ginger. So this ginger root is kind of tiny. I'm going to trim off some of the, the knots to make it a little bit easier to peel. So you could peel this with, um, a regular spoon, you could peel it with that really handy, um, the really handy uh, grapefruit spoon. 
Uh, so this is a regular spoon, you just run it over the flesh. If your ginger is fresh, the skin is going to come off very, very easily. So again, this is a regular spoon, nothing fancy, just using everyday things to accomplish our goals here in the kitchen. So I'm just going to peel that off. And you don't, it's not that the skin isn't edible, it is, it just doesn't taste so good, it's a little bitter. And we just want the ginger to shine through. Uh, ginger uh, has been studied for its anti-inflammatory benefits. So consuming ginger regularly is really nice. It can also help with nausea. I love using fresh ginger, which we're going to be using today, but if you didn't have access to fresh ginger, you could use dried ginger. You're not going to get quite the same effect flavor-wise or antioxidant-wise, but um, it'll, it'll work in a pinch. Uh, you can also purchase frozen cubes of ginger. I don't know if you guys have seen that in the grocery store. I always have them in my freezer because they last for a good long time and then I'll always have fresh ginger available. Wow, that's a lot. This is gonna be a spicy overnight oats. That's okay. All right, so let's start assembling this and then I will show you how to supreme the orange. So in a glass jar, I love mason jars because they're super available, affordable. I really like these plastic tops. Um, really awesome because they don't rust like the, um, like the metal ones. So you can just purchase these uh, online, very available. And now we're just going to start adding our, so here we go, a little confused here. All right, so in our glass jar, we're going to add our yogurt, oats, milk, chia seeds, maple syrup, orange zest, ginger, and cardamom. Wow, that's, that's easy, let's do that. All right, so let's add our oats. I really should have used my might be need a spoon. Should have used my funnel for this. All right, just add your oats. This makes two servings. What a mess here. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's get that out of the way. And then we're going to add our ginger. That's a lot of ginger, but I like it spicy, so that's that's fine. Here comes our orange zest, which smells amazing already. We're going to add our yogurt. So. Really simple here. Just add it all. This is an unsweetened yogurt, which is what I want you to look for. Okay, let's clean our surface here and then we will add our chia seeds. So I mentioned to you that chia seeds, just come to hello for a second and have a chat. Uh, I wanted to talk about chia seeds for a minute um, because they really, you know, there are very few foods in this world that I consider superfoods, but chia seed is right at the top of the list um, for several reasons. Number one, it's a seed, so it is a complete protein. Number two, it is a, it's a good source of plant-based omega-3. So remember, not the best source of the, you know, the, the kind of omega-3 that has that anti-inflammatory action, um, but still a good source. So de definitely want to have it in your diet. And also one of the best sources of fiber that you can find. Um, two tablespoons of chia seeds, which is what we're putting in here, uh, gets you to almost 50% of your daily allowance of fiber. So if I'm talking to somebody who's a little irregular, rather than sending them to the pharmacy, I send them to the chia seeds because uh, you're not going to find an easier way to include fiber in your diet. I'm going to add my maple syrup. So just add it to our jar here. I'm going to add my cardamom. If you don't like cardamom, now cardamom has a bit of an exotic flavor. It, it's very earthy. If you don't like it, you do not have to use that. And then let's go ahead and measure out our milk. So I am using almond milk. You can use any milk of choice. Um, let's see how, one cup of almond milk, okay. Let's do one cup here. So Jeannie and Mitch, we have a question about oats. And they said, based on a high carb content, is it okay to eat oats daily if you're trying to lose weight? So okay. oats are a great source of fiber, great source of soluble fiber in particular. Your gut bugs love them. Um, so I, I don't recommend that you avoid them, but uh, check with your healthcare provider and work out a plan that's best for you so that you can meet your own health goals. 
All right, so I just quickly made the dressing because I want to keep moving along here. I wanna make sure that we have time for Q&A. Okay, so our chia seed pudding is done. Okay, that's it. Let's um, come down here. I'm just going to show you quickly how to suprem an orange. Just want to now remove the peel. Try and get, so the white part is actually a really good source of fiber. So you don't have to remove all of it. It just makes it prettier. If you do, there we go. And then to segment your orange, you just want to take your knife and run it on either side of the membrane. And you can segment it that way, or you can serve your pudding like I will, uh, like I do in the photo there with your rounds. It's a really beautiful way to enjoy citrus. I think I'm gonna have that as soon as we're done with this cooking demo. All right, Elise, I am going to move on to the salmon recipe. It's a great. To finish, um, we're actually going to finish and start plating um, all of the recipes. So if people wanted to start asking questions now, um, they can idea. do that. Queue up your questions in the chat function. Yep, so I'm gonna keep it, I'm going to keep it on this view because I do wanna show them how we're plating the food. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead. Oh boy, this salmon is seared beautifully. Here, I'll show you the view. So you do want to make sure oops, that your fish is cooked thoroughly. Judy, um, one of the questions is how much cardamom and how long do you cook the salmon for? How much cardamom? Half a teaspoon. It's in the recipe, so half a teaspoon, so not much. Not much. How long do you cook the recipe for? I I'm sorry? Oh, how long do you cook the salmon? Until it's done. <laughs> so uh, this salmon, it, this salmon is definitely done. So it took about 15 minutes. So, you know, maybe seven minutes on each side. It really is going to depend on the thickness of your filet. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to add my spinach to the pan here. And I'll bring the pan back into view once it's done. Okay, while, um, you're, at, while you're adding the spinach, so... Um, a couple of questions. I just want to let everyone know that we will be emailing the recipes and some of the other resource materials to everyone that registered tomorrow morning. So everyone will get a copy of so the recipes and um, some uh, supporting materials. And we have a question about seeds and nuts. Um, okay, someone said they need to avoid seeds and nuts. What can be used in sit instead or do I just leave it out? It, thanks so much. It's a wonderful recipe. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so talk to your healthcare practitioner about about the seeds and nuts thing um, and, and what, what would be um, beneficial to you in meeting your health goals. Um, seeds and nuts, it can be like this chia pudding. It does have chia seeds in it, but you could run it in a blender. So maybe that would help. Um, but in a recipe like this, you could just leave it out altogether. On the salad that I'm going to be assembling, just leave it out altogether. Um, but because this has oatmeal in it, you could actually just leave the chia seeds out and increase the oatmeal. And the recipe would come out just fine. All right, let's take a look at our salmon. Wow, this is really incredible. Jeannie, I wish you guys salmon. were here. It's, it, I'm sure it smells amazing. Jeannie, uh, when you um, were um, measuring the portion for the salmon, um, the recipe is based on the portion after it's cooked or before it's cooked? No, before. So you want to purchase. So it's about um, four to six ounces per person. I think that in the recipe I did it for six ounces per person raw. So it is before cooked. So just make sure that you get four, you can get four six ounce portions or four four ounce portions. And that'll be good. I think I did it for six ounce portions. All right, so let's go ahead and assemble our salad. So we make sure we stay on time. Keep asking your questions if you like here. Look at the salmon, guys. So Jeannie, one of the things I noticed is that many of the products that you were using are, were or are organic. Do you tend towards buying um, solely organic products or do you think it's not necessary or what's your viewpoints on that? And, and Mitch, your, your viewpoints as well. 
Such a great question. So, you know, I really, um, the Dirty Dozen Clean 15, uh, that's um, at ewg.org. Like, I don't like calling any food dirty, um, but it is, if, if consuming organic is important to you, that's an excellent resource because what it, uh, what it um, illustrates for you, and they, it's an illustration, it's actually a list, it will share with you um, those foods that are less, um, you know, uh, they use less pesticides on, um, and other foods like oranges, that even though they're not organic, they have a thick skin. So as long as you're peeling it, it's, you know, your exposure is lower. So to answer your question, Dr. Gaming, it really is about patient preference. Like if it's important to you, go to ewg.org. It's an excellent guide um, to making, um, you know, informed decisions about the food that you're purchasing. Okay, so I'm going to whip up the salad. Watch how easy it comes together. So, you know, in a perfect world, this quinoa would have been made ahead of time or frozen. You can buy frozen quinoa and just defrost it. Uh, another great, another reason why I love these parchment paper, you can see I'm actually having, have it over here in the corner. I have a small space here, so I'm gonna try and make it work. Is that it's a great way to move things around the kitchen. This is a huge salad and it serves four people. So only make the salad if you got hungry people in your house. So let me toss this together. I'm going to add my leeks, my pomegranate seeds. Look at how pretty this is. Wow. Jeannie, what was the website again for um, the organic? It's ewg.org. Ewg. Ewg.org. Okay, so I added my seeds. And then here is my salad dressing, which I made very quickly. It's a really simple dressing, just red wine vinegar, mustard, and olive oil. And this is my lunch for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. This will stay good in my fridge because there's no leafy green in here. So it's not like it's going to wilt. So who, who want, who's going to make this? Absolutely. Right? And then we have our pudding, which I'm actually going to, I'll put it out, I'll pour it out for you so that you can, look at how thick it is already. It's not even coming out. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And this was not even done overnight. So it's going to get even thicker. So that's about a serving. There we go. Jeannie, the salad. Um, do you recommend, uh, you know, it being cold, room temperature, or reheating it? If, like, let's say you're going to make it the day before. And, and yeah, um, I need it anyway. <laughs> like, it's great, warm, just like this. But, like, after, right after you make it, you can just um, consume it cold. You do. I wouldn't heat it up. It's not necessary. Um, but you could if you wanted to. I would leave, if you're going to make it ahead of time, leave out the pomegranate seeds and the pumpkin seeds because they'll get soggy. Everything else will just marinate and will just be even more delicious the next day. Um, let's just review real quick before I change the view. This is our quinoa salad, our harvest quinoa salad. We have our cardamom overnight chia pudding with oatmeal and then look at this. Wow, this is like restaurant worthy guys. I wish you were here really. I wanna, I wanna have dinner with you guys. All right, so should I change my view? Oh, we have a question. Is the overnight oats for breakfast or dinner? Yes. <laughs> you can, so the, uh, the overnight oats is perfect for breakfast, delicious enough for dessert, um, and great for a snack. The calories are really right in that snack zone too. Um, <laughs> I, I'm getting some LOLs here, perfect. So, you know, I think now's a good time to change over the ho host and we'll do any last call to our attendees. Please submit any questions in the chat function. We'll, we'll stay on for another minute or two to answer any more questions. So Jeannie, I actually have a question. You know, you were, you were talking about out when you go out shopping, you should come home, pop up your cauliflower and you store it in the refrigerator or whatever. And I know there's been a lot of, um, you know, discussion about proper storage containers because of leaching of plastics and other yeah. contaminants into food. So, you know, what do you, um, 
and, and Mitch also please weigh in, like what do you actually recommend as appropriate storage containers? I know you, you were talking about your produce bag. I don't know if you yep. said that or, or something else. So the produce bags um, are plastic, but we're not storing anything wet in them. So I'm totally comfortable um, with having you store your rinsed and dried produce in these bags. Um, other than that, I use glass containers. So glass containers with plastic lids. Um, I know they're, they're heavy and they're bulky and they take up a lot of space, but um, that's, in my opinion, um, the safest way to store your food is in glass. And also, don't underestimate the power of a mason jar. Like a lot of things can fit in mason jars, a lot. So you can get the wide mouth jars and those are really, you know, it's glass. So it's a really safe way and you can sterilize it as well in your dishwasher. Would you share the actual, oh, that's very cute. But wants to know if we would share the salad virtually. I wish, I'm starving. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> it smells so good. It smells so good. It smells so good. The salmon, everything. This is a really great menu. I'm so excited that we worked out these recipes for Summit Medical Group. Um, yeah, so thank you for having me. It's been great. So are there any more questions? If not, you guys, like, please feel free to have any questions. Um, I know you know where you can find the Summit Medical Group team, but um, you can go over to livingplate.org, which is my website, and just use a contact form. Um, you can also DM me on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I am available to support you in the kitchen. You know, my, my goal in doing these types of events is to um, support you in meeting your health goals uh, without sweating in the kitchen. Like, none of these recipes um, is are really difficult. And that's, you know, I really just need to break down the barriers of, uh, that are in the way of people cooking healthy food. And so hopefully I did that for you guys tonight. So Jeannie, one of the, um, attendees actually said, thank God I ate before watching. <laughs> <laughs> that's for uh, sure. I, her, I agree with you because I didn't eat before watching this. So it's been a little challenging because everything looks <laughs> wonderful and delicious and you've motivated me to go home and cook oh see so the motivation is great that's great thank you so much dr given um so anyway i i think that that's all of the questions um so i just want to thank you Jeannie. so is that yep i think that's it so Jeannie, i just want to thank you so much um to our guest presenter Jeannie Bertucci, and to all of you for joining us this evening um as we mentioned earlier the recipes will be emailed to you tomorrow morning they will also be posted on our website sometimes next week, along with the video from the live demo this evening. Of course, Jeannie was very kind to share with you her link to her webpage. And I'd like to thank you in advance for taking the time to fill it out. So, um, you know, for all of us here, I just want to say thank you. Um, this was the first time that we had to, because of the COVID pandemic, do a virtual surviving and thriving series. And I think, um, both the session this week as well as the session last month have been phenomenal. Um, thank you so much for all of your time and your effort.